guys. So this makes a difference to exploring wild wetlands in Rwanda. Today I'm taking you on a little walk through the local villages uh, near where I grew up and we're heading off to Ravensthorpe Reservoir. And this is kind of an interesting one because I found a guy on YouTube talking about this reservoir or talking about Ravensthorpe as being the setting for a game. <laughs> Uh, so I don't know, an RPG game, online game, not too sure. Uh, but it was kind of funny because he came across Ravensthorpe Reservoir and he was shocked that it was a real place. Whereas I've always known it to be a real place and I'm kind of shocked it's in a game. <laughs> so if you know more about this and which game it is, please tell me below because I was fascinated. <laughs> so it's an absolutely beautiful day today, really sunny. These are buttercups and folklore says if you hold them under somebody's chin and they glow yellow, then the person likes butter. Okay, there's a JCB coming out of the hedge. <laughs> because why not? Is it going anywhere? Oh, I know what it's doing. This is the field where the steam rally is going to be and it's putting down gravel so that the cars don't damage the ground too much when they come in and out. Looks like that might take them a while. Okay, so I just met the guy who was operating the JCB um, and he just explained that what he's trying to do was to fill in a pothole because <laughs> there was a bit of a dip in the road. A bit like this one. So these are the red poppies that are featured on Remembrance Day. The red poppies of Flanders to commemorate the war dead. Wow, look at all of this wheat ripening. Plenty of sunshine for it. Here's the Hollowell entrance. So this is where the steam engines were coming that we saw at the pub the other day. So over here at this crossroads, when I was a kid, my mum and I used to walk up here quite a bit because where that bench is used to be called the Ladybird Park because all of this was really long grass and there were hundreds and hundreds of ladybirds. Um, it was really, really beautiful, but haven't seen them for years now. So benches are quite often dedicated to people and this one's dedicated to the Traveller's Rest in memory of an old traveller, Frederick Dawson, who died while riding near this spot August the 1st, 1929. And I was never too sure if riding meant that he was riding a horse, because this is very horsey country, or whether it meant riding a bike. And somebody eventually told me he was riding a bicycle and he had a heart attack and fell off. So it's a really nice view from here because we're looking right down at Ravensthorpe Reservoir. So that's where we're going to go and have a little walk around. So we're just heading on down the hill towards the reservoir. Plenty of shade from all the trees. We used to call these pink flowers ragged robin because later in the season as they start to die they get this fluff on them a bit like dandelions so they go all raggedy and this bobbly one here is called goosegrass because it sticks to anything so when i was a kid you'd take a big handful of it and you'd chase somebody and you'd throw it at them and it would stick to their t-shirt and their clothes and they'd have all of these tiny little bobbles on you and it would take a while to get off. Got lots of sheep having a little graze. Doesn't know which blade of grass to go for, there's so many. Little lambs. The hill's about to get very steep. You can see just in front of us, it just stops, the road stops, and that's because it goes down like that. Finally made it. Hi guys, so we finally made it. Um, 
it is tradition whenever I come back to the UK that we take a little bit of a walk around Raven Salt Reservoir because growing up I used to come here all the time uh, we used to bring our dogs and walk them around the reservoir so it's just really nice to come back uh, last time I was here I think it was oh, winter autumn it was colder than this um, and I was testing out my 360 camera and we took a walk around it and this time it's glorious sunshine so it's nice that each time I come back it's a different season so you get to see how it changes throughout the year uh, so I'm going to switch over to the 360 probably because it's quite a nice camera for this and we'll just have a little walk around This is a beautiful time of year to be here because there are hundreds of little blue dragonflies. So when we went around the wetlands park in Rwanda, there were loads of red dragonflies and here they're blue, bright electric blue. Some years you come around here in summer and you just get entire clouds of them crossing the pathway. It's really incredible. And there are lots of swans out there as well. 13 swans with cygnets, with babies. kind of entertaining is that the UK is currently going through a bit of a heat wave so it's about 27 sometimes 28 degrees um, and everybody's going oh it's so hot isn't it um, and I've just come from the long dry season in Rwanda so now this is kind of normal <laughs> but I will say that in the UK it is so much more humid uh, because it's an island nation there's a lot of humidity in the air and that can make it harder to cope with the heat because in Rwanda you're at quite a high altitude and that just helps to take the edge off it and it's mostly a pretty dry heat up there um, so I mean don't get me wrong it's still hot but it's easier to cope with I think when it's dry heat Whereas this feels a bit West Africa at the moment, a little bit humid, a little bit damp uh, and quite warm. But um, yeah, it's nice. I'm enjoying it because sometimes I come back in winter and that's really hard to adjust to. Whereas this, it feels like I just stepped off the plane back into Rwanda. <laughs> Except everybody's got a funny accent here. Uh, yeah. Oh my goodness, check this out. This was here last time. I came round the reservoir. Oh my goodness, I thought it was just a temporary structure, but they seem to have made it into something more permanent. It's a very Blair Witch Project. I'm not too sure what's going on. <laughs> I think it's like a little hidey hole, a little cubby. Um, let's have a little look. <gasps> Ooh, creepy. <laughs> I don't think I could get in there, I'm too tall. This definitely feels like something from the forest. I think Saloba would love this. <laughs> that would be a film set before you knew it. Just going to take another little detour through this beautifully lit little forest area. How fairy path does that look? You pass beneath that, you'll never be seen again. Look at these beautiful tall trees. It's 
so nice here. Apparently before I arrived there was lots of rain and I think that this is the result of that. But I brought the Rwandan weather with me so uh, everybody's very happy. <laughs> rescued this little guy who was drowning. The Insta360 has a really long pole so I just plucked him out of the water and uh, he's feeling a lot better. You gonna fly? You gonna fly? Yeah? Go on, get back out there, go find yourself a mate. There we go. You dry out and stay away from the water, okay? So this is my favourite part of the walk, is we turn down this path here and it comes out at an old Victorian bridge that crosses the overflow from the reservoir. It's really, really pretty. Just stop for a little drink of water here. And this particular bench is in memory of Steve Martin, 1944 to 1997. Time to carry on. Satisfying clunk. So this is an old Victorian water station, still in operation, pumping the water from the reservoir, cleaning it and popping it into people's homes. So these are dandelions and you just blow on them and all the seeds disappear. <laughs> So here's all of the old Victorian pumping station equipment. Still looks quite impressive, very steampunk. And that's the Victorian pumping station down there. When I used to walk along here with my mum as a kid, we always used to look at the ground because you'd find fishing lures. So the little feathers that they attach to the end of fishing lines. Sometimes they still had hooks on them, <laughs> a little bit dangerous, but it was good fun. We have a collection of them somewhere. Lots of swans today. Oh, I'm sorry. I've made it get back in the water, but I think that's a cormorant. It was uh, standing there with its mouth open as though it was cooling down.
beautiful swan feather. So pretty. Okay, so we're coming to the end of this part and we're going to head all the way around there and all the way to the end and then that bit over there is road so we'll follow the road back round to the car park and I don't know if you can see that but right ahead of us are some wind turbines because there's a wind farm like about this walk is even though you're just going around the reservoir there are so many different parts to it so you've got the woodland that we came through then you've got the walkway across the old Victorian bridge uh, and then you've got this part here which is sort of like a wild meadow and so even though it's a short kind of walk maybe about an hour um, you feel like you've been to a lot of different places so it's really nice crazy how many dragonflies there are. Don't know if the camera is picking them up, but there's hundreds and hundreds of dragonflies. Many of them mating. They're everywhere. A village straight ahead there. That's the church we passed at the beginning of the walk. I think these are my favourite wildflowers. They're called bittersweet. So it's pretty rare to get mosquitoes in the UK. We do have them but you know we don't have lots of them uh, and we don't have malaria so if they bite you it's not a thing. Um, but we do have horse flies, or at least we have them around this area, and they're very much, um, they're a bit like tetsi flies when you go to Akagera and they kind of just dive bomb you and they stick to you and they're really hard to get off and they bite really hard. Uh, so yeah, we do have horse flies and I've been bitten by a couple today, uh, but you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's not too bad. Oh crap, I was just walking and I heard this loud hiss. And there's a mother swan there with her cygnets and she hissed at me and I don't know if she's going to let me pass. I'm just going to go past if that's okay. I just want to carry on walking. Don't know if she's going to let me pass. She seems quite angry about it. Nope, she's uh, chilled out. Okay, we're just going to walk past. Just going to walk. Going to speak loudly so that you know where I am. Okay, I'm gone. I'm gone. <laughs> Oh, that wasn't pleasant. Swans look beautiful, but they are also really, really angry <laughs> and big. 
and apparently they can break a man's arm. They tend to attack canoeists if you're canoeing down a river and they've got babies. But I think she was just giving a little hiss to warn me that she was there. She doesn't seem to be following me. Oh dear, I seem incapable of passing these without going down them. I love them. These are where the fishermen stand when they're fishing. But it's just amazing, all of these dragonflies. I really can't get over it, it's so beautiful. Okay, I better get a move on uh, because I didn't set out till about 3.34 because I wanted the heat of the sun to die down a little bit. Uh, and now it has, and it's definitely evening now, late afternoon. Uh, and before I used to walk around to the car park, get in my car and drive home. But because I no longer have a car, <laughs> sadly Kitty is up in Blackburn living her best life. She's been fully restored, uh, but she's no longer mine. Um, so now I have to walk from here all the way back up to home. Um, so we've still got quite a way to go. <laughs> As you can see from the ground, this part of the reservoir is quite difficult to pass if it rains. Um, even though it's really, really seriously hot today, it's still pretty muddy. So when it actually does rain, sometimes this is almost impassable. I've just ducked into this little space between the trees and it's really serene. There's a great big old oak tree growing out of the water, like the world tree. It's just here, reflecting off the surface. Really peaceful. So yeah, I just really like that most of England is like this, is even if you live in a city, if you drive 10-15 minutes outside of any city, you're going to come to a beautiful piece of countryside, there's going to be fields, reservoirs, things to walk around. It's just a really green, beautiful country most of the time. Um, even if the inner cities don't always reflect that. <laughs> but I think that's the same in any country. So this part of it's actually become kind of impassable, but I think that there's a side path that we can take. So yeah, if instead of going that way, we head around here, we should be able to go around it. <laughs> there we go come out into a beautiful field follow the path I'm just looking at how incredibly dry the earth is it's really cracked crazy considering we've just avoided a giant mud bath. Okay, so I think that we can duck down here and get back out again. Walked right past this the first time. Try and do it without falling on my arse. Oops, yikes. There we go. Oh, that was fun. Now we come to the part of the walk where you walk along the main road, which is always good fun. I know we complain in Rwanda that there isn't any pavement and that pedestrians and cars keep bumping into each other, but in parts of the UK the exact same thing happens. <laughs> Pop through here oh, and turn right. If I keep eating as much as I have been, I'm not going to be able to do that for much longer. <laughs> so that wall over there 
is where we were walking towards the boats and the fishing hut. When you're walking along country roads in the UK, it's really important to walk into oncoming traffic so that people see your face. Uh, according to the highway code, you're supposed to always walk on, I guess, the right hand side so that cars see you coming. Yeah, cars come down here pretty quickly. So over here is the car park. And on the opposite side of the road is a wetlands nature reserve. So a wildlife reserve. And you can't actually go over there. It's completely protected, uh, but very, very beautiful. So yeah, usually I would turn right here and head to the car park and drive myself home. Uh, but as it is, <laughs> I'm going to just carry on walking. We're going to keep on walking and we're going to go up through another little village called Cote Manor. Well, Cotters, Cottersbrook. Oh, I don't know anymore. I grew up here. Who knows? Who can say? It's a mystery. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, eventually I'll get home. Apparently this giant pampas grass here is some form of um, biofuel and they can press it down into little bricks and you can burn it for fuel, I believe, possibly. Yeah, there's an entire field of it here. Huge amounts of it. So it must be profitable because they keep planting it. It's a long way to Tipperary. It's a long way to go. Ah yes, Cape Manor Gardens. This is another really nice place to go around. We might go there in a few days. I know it looks like cotton, but it's actually pronounced coton. So yes, this is actually the manor that Coton Manor Gardens belongs to. It's a very, very pretty house. So they've got the opening times on the gate. We'll pop back when they're open. Coton is an incredibly pretty little village. But this house straight ahead of me, the white one, when I was a kid, it used to be called the Bee House because it was made of sandstone. And there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of little holes where bees had nested in it. And every time that you walked along here, you had to walk on the right hand side, so the side we're on now. Otherwise, all of the bees would swarm around you. They were very friendly, they never stung anybody. But um, <laughs> it was quite interesting. Oh my goodness, I think this is a cherry tree. Loads of cherries in it. I love it when the trees arch over the road like this and create a tunnel. It's so pretty. These are the daisies that we saw growing all along the verges of the motorways. And this little plant here is called feverfew and it's really good for headaches. You can eat the leaves as they are or make a tea out of it. It's got a really strong smell. Oh, that's a slightly creepy barn. No one's ever been murdered in there. And uh, this is the current state of the pedestrian pathway <laughs> so no walking along that might be safer to switch over and walk down the other side of the road nice farm and lo and behold we're almost back where we came from almost <laughs> a little bit further to go look at that there's a hot air balloon oh my gosh that was a gun, but I think it's to scare off the crows from the crops. Phileas fog. I don't quite know what they're shooting, but <laughs> it's usually a crow scarer. Unless they're shooting at the hot air balloon. Unlikely. Hello, chickadee. And here's the church spire straight ahead. Home sweet home. Here's a better view of that wind farm I was looking at before. Beautiful view of the church. St. Ethelredus, which once upon a time was St. Wilfred's and then changed. And the local graveyard with the Remembrance Day poppies. 
Okay, so we're back where we began, at the front of the church, and I am knackered. Um, it's usually like, I guess, about 45 minutes around the reservoir, and I guess like hour and a half to walk from home to there and back again. Uh, but I stopped to take so many pictures and met a couple of people along the way and had a bit of a chat, so it's been quite an afternoon and it's lovely that it's still light and bright and um, yeah it was really nice so I hope that you enjoyed Ravensthorpe Reservoir and uh, we'll do it again next time I'm back in England.